All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and it has been a hot minute since I've been able to post. I want to kind of explain myself, so here we go. Um, yeah, before we get into anything else, I want to just give you, I left my job last Friday at the time of recording and started a new job this week on Monday. So I've been kind of in that transition, and then over the weekend, I was celebrating a friend's 30th up in the Finger Lakes uh, in New York, in New York state. So I was, you know, not creating during that time as well. And of course, so much stuff happened. All this stuff changed and I got to, I missed a bunch of things. So we're going to get back into it here. Please like, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. Let's give our shout out to our channel members as always for their continued support. If you're ever interested, link down below along with link to discord, go check it out. Thank you guys for supporting me through these times. I know it can be rough and I, I do, I do apologize. Like I know it's not easy. So thank you again. Let's talk about this. We've got a lot to update you guys on with the account, the game, everything. Let's go. All right. So I want to at least talk about what changed in the account in the month of October, right? A lot of stuff kind of happened. A lot of stuff went on. So in terms of new character relics, we upgraded our Grand Admiral Thrawn, Thrawn to Relic 7, we took our king to relic nine for operations and then we actually moved up our k2so to relic five to take advantage of the rogue one datacron so that's those were kind of the big changes i did some other things but we'll kind of talk about that in terms of you know what happened in november but kind of more of a update that would have happened and i was trying to film it didn't get to it i did buy the night sister light speed bundle um a big reason I purchased this was because of Great Mothers and Morgan kind of being really accessible, um, you know, with the way that Balin shook out, with the way that Ahsoka is shaping out to be. I really felt that this was the direction I should head down. So by doing that, I was able then to Relic Marin. I only took her to Relic 3, kind of matching everybody else, and brought Asajj up to Relic 5 to kind of fulfill the Ahsoka requirement um for that you know set so she's now at relic five we've got a lot of work to do on these girls from a mod perspective and again that'll happen but i do need to be saving resources because we've got a lot of other mods that i need to get on top of so this is a big push on my account recently to really upgrade mods update it get it into a position where we're really going to be successful so that's been a big push here um so that kind of solves that quote unquote night sister you know get the night sisters up and running right make sure that we're making those decisions happen um now from a farming perspective on shards we are farming great mothers right now in the cantina this has been my focus and it's kind of scary because we're going to be doing great mothers then morgan and then even onto hondo and i'd actually started hondo before getting onto the great mothers and a big reason i had started hondo was uh, trying to prepare myself for Balin, and then I think what happened was the Night Sister bundle went farmable, and because the Night Sister bundle went farmable, I decided to go for uh, the Great Mothers instead. Um, I think that was kind of why I made that switch. Um, simply trying to say, hey, you know what? I need to take advantage of these girls while I can. And then the other thing that's been going on is we are now doing our Death Trooper, Captain Enoch, Night Trooper. So shard farming all of them. With Enoch and Death Trooper, we are now doing refreshes of both. So we're doing refreshes here. Night Trooper, we are not currently refreshing at the moment. I'm not sure if I will be doing that, to be perfectly honest. Um, I need, what, 65 more shards there. We're looking at about 120 for Enoch and Death Trooper. So we should be wrapping all of them up around the same time, you know, give or take a few days. So that'll be good. And the only reason we're doing refreshes for them now is is because of the Peridia assault battle. With that assault battle, I want to be able to take advantage of them at Relic 7 as soon as I can. Um, and the reason I say, hey, they're, I'm not rushing them for Ahsoka is because we got additional requirements for Ahsoka and part of that is Padawan Sabine Wren. With us getting Sabine Wren and I believe one more marquee for Ahsoka, I can't really say, oh, well, I'm rushing the Peridia characters because I want to get um, Ahsoka faster because I'm still going to have to farm Sabine somewhere. So there's a lot of moving pieces here. I am actually a little bit nervous that Sabine could go to Cantina. I really 
that would be like devastating because they did Morgan and Great Mothers on 16 energy nodes. I've got to get Hondo. Like I'm really like starting to see like, oh gosh, like signal date is a problem. And that's a big reason why we purchased that Night Sister Lightspeed bundle. Along with that second set that they released, they released the third set. And part of that was Ahsoka Tano Fulcrum to Relic 9, Barris Offie to 5, Sabine Ren to 7, and CT Rex to Relic 7. So the good thing for me is that I've only had to do one new Relic, and that was Barris. Barris was gear 12. I now pushed her up to Relic 5. Gonna have to work on her mods too. A lot of stuff to do there. Um, but again, we're in a pretty decent position. The Fulcrum to Relic 9 for me is devastating for a lot of reasons. Um, I think this is the killer blow for a lot of players. I think most people could stomach two Relic 9s. But I think one on Fulcrum is going to really crush a lot of players. Because I think like the, if, it, if the Fulcrum didn't kill you, the additional marquee units is going to kill you. And I'm going to be honest, I think from Capital Games that this is a... This whole Galactic Legend, I think, was a... The way she was released, personally, I think was a mistake. Um, either the, the Peridia characters doesn't make sense for Ahsoka. You know, should we should have had Sabine and, you know, somebody else. Like, it just, it feels like a lot of marquee units. Again, four is what we had for Lord Vader, but they were all for the Bad Batch, right? They all kind of fit together. They all made sense. Now here you could make the argument, oh, well, you're building some characters for Sabine's team and that's fair or for, you know, Ahsoka's team and that's fair. But these three kind of concern me a bit. And this has been a concern I've had for a while. We don't really have a solid remnant team that they go into yet. You can add in some characters, but it's sort of, you know, when you look at the Imperial Remnant faction, the biggest problem we have here is Dark Trooper. He's the one character that I've never really, I don't want to say never been sold on. But he just doesn't fit into any of these teams, right? For Captain Enoch, it flat out says non-droid, right? For, you know, Dark Trooper Moff Gideon, it flat out says um, non-droid. So there's just a lot of this like, okay, they don't really like Dark Trooper, but you have to use them on one of the teams. And my issue with Dark Trooper in any team outside of the Veers team will always be that he can't like his health pool kind of like b1 battle droid right b1 those stacks when you have those stacks and if you can't like b1 can at least recover like b1 can technically recover from one stack all the way to a million dark trooper once you lose that fourth stack it's gone for forever and you know getting to full health and protection doesn't grant you additional stacks i get that but my whole argument with death trooper is that when he starts losing stacks it makes that team easier to kill Right? Like, you can target Dark Trooper with AoEs and everything else, and there's nothing he can really do about it. You can't, you know, he's kind of that soft target in all of these teams. And once you take him out, you know, damage goes way down. So, you know, just, I, I, we need another Imperial Remnant, or we need Thrawn to come in and kind of steal the characters that he's going to steal to create his team. Right? Which I think that's kind of the next GL that's basically confirmed, if not, you know, here already. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff going on there. In terms of signal data, we are in a pretty good spot, if I'm being perfectly honest. I still have 600 of these. We've got nine, almost 1,000 there and over 1,000 here. And that's with all those upgrades that I've made. So I could do Ahsoka to Relic 9, but we are waiting because I'm trying to gauge where the rest of these characters like Shin and Merrick are going to go farmable. Um, getting ready for Balin, getting ready for that Great Mother team, kind of build all that stuff out. And then, um, like the because of the refreshes we're doing with regular energy, I'm not really farming Kyrotech right now. Like the, my Kyrotech inventory still in a really good position because of all that work I did previously. But we're going to be churning through that while I'm farming Night Trooper, Captain Enoch, and Death Trooper. They take up, um, so we're spending 500 energy every single day between Enoch, Death Trooper, Peridia, and Night Trooper at the moment. So if we have to do any extra regular energy. I mean, you're getting close to that point of I won't be able to do all the refreshes that I need. Um, and that's going to be a big cause of concern, particularly for characters like Shin and Merrick. Otherwise, just in terms of like, okay, what's going on with, you know, Datacrons, everything else. So I missed a lot of Conquest while I was away. I wasn't even farming Datacrons. I should have been smarter with that. I just, I'll be honest, I wasn't even thinking about it. Um, 
so you know we're here we're gonna do stuff i don't know we'll have to wait and see my my datacrons have been a mess lately and it's obviously cost me a lot of grand arenas um now something else that i think as i'm thinking through like just myself and playing this game like am i really casual now i mean I'm just not taking certain elements as seriously. One of the big ones being Grand Arena. Like, I've really kind of stepped back here. And honestly, I think Capital Games is going to have to find a way that the skill squish is just out of control. Like, I'm one loss out of Kyber 2. And I still have a winning record since they've done everything. So, like, my, law, my drop has really been because of the skill squish and not necessarily because I'm some garbage player now. And a lot of people are experiencing that. Like, I can see it in the bracket that I'm in that it's good players here. So, I, I do want to make like mention that and just make sure that we are be you know kind of aware of those things. Um, you know, that is something that's really waning on me. And then, lastly, even just from, a, like, I, you know, I talked a lot about, like, mods and everything. I am really making some good progress here. Like, we're starting to get some very good mods on people. I'm actually having a tougher and tougher time finding places for 15 speed mods and things where maybe there's a good mod but it's not great um one of the examples i want to show you all is my darth talon down here i believe it's this one here yeah this mod like this is a solid mod all the way around right but i didn't really know where to put this i couldn't find a great character for it a great home and so you know i have a lot of confidence going into you know this year and going you know i should say ending this year and into the next that we are making that solid progress. We are making good progress on our mods and they are kind of allowing us to make better decisions. We are, you know, the speed's going up, the, the stats are going up. You know, I really, I really want to say that I, you know, I'm kind of proud of the way that that's been transpiring and it's allowing me to sort of progress the, you know, one of the things that happens at my level is you'll kind of stagnate right? You, you stagnate. You're not going to, I don't want to say you're not constantly making progress, but you kind of stagnate. You don't really continually progress every single element of your account. And mods are something that I can do that in. And I really have noticed that pick up. And it has been something that's enabled me to be competitive or even, you know, better off in game modes like conquest and, you know, territory battles where a lot of my focus really has been. Um, and that's maybe something just overall for this game with this Peridia Assault Battle now. Um, player versus environment content is getting increasingly more challenging. And it's getting to a point where you're, the need for your mods to be like solid is very much there. And for a player of you know, my, uh, an account of my magnitude and the kind of guild that I'm in... I have to make sure that we're continuing to keep up with that. You know, you don't want to just be constantly swapping mods like we have to do for this raid, which I really hope the next one isn't quite as invasive with that because this one definitely feels like you, you really struggle in this Naboo raid without that. And that's just something that has kind of bled into some of the um, casualness of, you know, my play lately has just been kind of feeling drained at times with that, you know, and I'm, I'm curious where the next raid goes, and that's maybe where I want to end this video uh, and kind of talk about where I see my account heading with this next raid, with this next thing that's going to come in. So obviously, Ahsoka and Balin, we're going to get there, right? That's that's the that's what's going to get us there. But this next raid, we do want to make sure that we are getting ourselves prepared for that. Obviously, some of these new characters are going to be a part of that, whether it's Balin and Ahsoka or one or the other. We don't really know, but there's something that's going to be, you know, changing, something that's going to be happening. So the best thing that I can do between now and then is ensure that my account's in a position much like it was for the Naboo raid. The one thing I think I did really well for this battle of Naboo, obviously I bought the Lightspeed bundle to help me with the Jedi, but otherwise I made some very good investment decisions with those Relic Nines on Master Qui-Gon, Padawan Obi-Wan, you know, Queen Amidala. I ensured that, you know, my Gungans were ready, right? That I built those teams. And so that's kind of why I'm trying to get that Balin team ready to go. Get that Great Mother's team ready to go. If they include Night Sisters or they include mercenaries in this new raid, I want to make sure that we're in a position to take full advantage of that, right? So um, 
you know, that's kind of why we're putting Hondo on that list as part of Balin's team. So if you're somebody thinking of going for Balin, I'd make sure you go grab Hondo because he very realistically could be part of that next new raid and be that difference maker. Very similar to, um, you know, when you think about the battle for Naboo here and the impact that Keller and Beck has to your Galactic Republic Jedi, I could very much see um, Hondo Onaka kind of filling that role where Hondo is going to either give you another team or allow your team to be significantly better. So I want to encourage all of you with that. So, you know, again, kind of rambling a little bit at the end here, but I appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, please like, subscribe, comment. I love you all so much. Thank you for sticking with me through these times. And your support means, it truly does mean the world. You know, when I get on there and I apologize, you guys are like, Phil, it's okay. Real life first. Like, I love it. And I think that's something that as a content creator, I've had to really come to grips with at times that some days I've got to put myself and the family and career first. And so um, I really appreciate you guys. I love you so much. May the force be with you. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, my friends.